to shout your name, O Lord. Shout his name, praise his name, Jesus.
down when your cares have buried you and there's nothing left to do lay it all down lay it all down at the feet of Jesus at the feet of But your heart was tied Feed the worst and fed the fire Lay it all down Lay it all down Fill with all those anxious thoughts And all your doubts become your God Lay it all down Lay it all down page back there. <laughs> we have one more. <laughs> when peace like a river 
Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask that you just help guide us and walk in your footsteps. We ask that you're here with us today and open our hearts to you. Um, help just guide us as we are together here and we are worshiping you as we love you so much and help direct us uh, to make better decisions today and every day. Uh, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen and amen. <clears throat> is this going to work for me? Okay, so I'm singing that song, It's Well With My Soul, and I'm trying to think, is it well with my soul? You know what I'm saying? Because so much trouble and so much going on, but I realize I'm saying that by faith. Because it is well with our soul, because we're in the hands of God, right? Father, we just thank you so much that no matter where we are and what we've come from and where we're doing today, we are well in you because you are the sovereign God and that you have us in the palm of your hand, Lord. And we're grateful for that, Jesus. We're grateful for today, Sunday, the celebration of your resurrection from the dead. We pray for that resurrecting power to be in us, Lord. We thank you that you make us rise from the ashes and you motivate us, Lord. And we want to make a difference in our generation because of who you are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Greet those around you. Spread a little love. Courtney. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my family, uh, Christina is going to have a little baby soon in March, I'm going to pray for her.
gonna move this. I don't know why these chairs keep moving back further and further and further. <clears throat> Whew. Three, 300. Whoa, I see what you're saying. We're going month to month. Oh, man. If only I brought my glasses. Vanakam. <laughs> Wanda Nalu. Katerikustotram. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. South side. South side of Redondo Beach. <clears throat> All right, who's paying attention? Raise your hand. Two, three people. Three people. Okay, this is a bulletin right here. Take notes if you like. Oh, you know what? We're live streaming this. Did you know that? Amen. Now, if you want to get that, check with Zach, because he just sent me a link today, and I sent it out to a bunch of people. Uh, I, I should actually send it over to Africa right now. They could live stream it from Africa. Wouldn't that be awesome? All right, don't move. Don't move then. Stay right there. Watch me do this, okay? Let's go here. Let's go there. Look at that, YouTube. That's great. Let's go to WhatsApp. Let's go to these guys. And let's go like this. Paste that in there. There, I just sent it to Africa. How about that? <laughs> Anybody else want it? I got it. Did you already get it? <laughs> Damien says he already has it. All right. Let's go back here. Let's do a little. Let's do a little technology. Who else wants this? I'm gonna send it to Sandra G A. You know Sandra. You know Sandra G A just started a Planet Church. We're very glad of her. Sandra, wherever you are, go girl power. This is what we do here. This is what we do. You know, I'm going to send it to my, all my siblings. Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, that'll do. That'll set the group text going like mad. <laughs> Get me off this group chat. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's see what this is. Chris sighting, greeting people after worship. Live stream is dope. Hey, how about that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, there's Chris. Wave your hand, Chris. You can be on TV. <clears throat> I'm going to send this. Who else should I send it to? I got these group things. Okay, send to them. <laughs> Donica, Erica, John English, Joe Springer. Should Joe Springer have this? <laughs> That'll kill him. <laughs> oh, it's too much fun here. We're having a good time. Thank you, Zach, for hooking us up. Damien, <clears throat> you know, our, uh, our website got hacked by some guy in Kiev, Russia. So we've had to change everything over. I tried to buy it back, but he won't sell it to us. Isn't that crazy? Why would you steal a church Which website? A church or yeah, no, uh, Breakwater. That's why maybe if you make an online donation, it doesn't work anymore. Thank God for that. I thought maybe he'd steal it and then keep the donation button so he could just siphon money off people, but we checked on that. Huh? Breakwater. Breakwater. <laughs> 2.0. Yeah, we're, we're working, on, working on something called Breakwater Embassy because we want to be an embassy, right? We're going to be an embassy. We are the embassy. We're in a meeting of the ambassadors. How's it feel? Yes. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. High priest. He's our high priest. Amen. We're just little priests. Believers, priesthood of the believer. All right, so <clears throat> in this bulletin, for those of you in our listening audience, just kidding. Uh, our vision, if I could read this, oh my gosh, where's my glasses? Have passion for God and compassion for people. Why not? 
our purpose is to grow in our knowledge and love of Jesus Christ and to make him known throughout the world. Amen. We're doing our part. Uh, we're praying for the Yao people, don't forget, in Malawi. And our mission is to be joyful. Amen. Okay? Yeah. Why? The joy of the Lord is strength. Amen. That's right. Joyful family of friends. That's what we want to be. Uh, who are probably committed. It's hard to say. Oh, welcoming and non-traditional in our structure. What could be more non-traditional than my shirt? Our purpose is to protect, help, and care for one another, and we are passionately committed to growing in our love for Jesus and consecrated to a generous love for each other. I can amen that. Amen. You know, I have to wear the shirt to keep up with Doug. You know, he's so fashionable all the time. All right. So you know that uh, the ministry of the Breakwater Church, the sun does not set on that. And we are actively involved in uh, many nations in the world and our little nation of Malawi. Uh, we're working hard with them over there and preparing to go in June for a big outreach. We have pastors we support. We have kids we're putting through school. We have borehole project, deep water water wells we're doing. We have uh, uh, ministry it's, that's going on even right now as we speak. And we're really excited about that. So the way that we invest in this, because we're not talking about tithing, we're talking about investing in the kingdom of God, in the eternal. <clears throat> you can do that right here. Everything takes money, even advancing the kingdom of God. So uh, tithing and Africa outreach and any other thing that you'd like to contribute to, except don't do the Boy Scouts anymore. All right. So we're going to come before the Lord right now, the tithes and offerings. Our investment. How many investors do we have here? <clears throat> we have investors. That's it. Father, we just thank you so much. Thank you that we can invest in your kingdom. Thank you that we let your, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. And you're a generous God, and you call us to be generous, Lord. <clears throat> we want to be that way, Lord. We want to be able to give and to bless and to be a blessing. As you bless us, Lord, let it pour forth from us. We pray that you'd take this offering today, Lord, that you'd multiply it on good soil and cause there to be fruit that remains. We pray over this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves.
and are about to step off into the darkness of the unknown. Faith is knowing one of two things will happen. There will be something solid to stand on, or you will be taught to fly. <laughs> so when you step out into the unknown of tithing, Taking that chance, trusting your Lord, and testing Him, and tithing. Know that two things will happen. You will land on solid rock, or you'll be taught to fly. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you that your word is true. You're true. In Jesus' name, Father God, we pray that this offerings and tithes, Father God, will multiply like the mustard seed. It will feed the nations. It will feed our brothers and sisters here in this little body, Father God. And bless the streets, Father God. And Father, we just thank you right now for the generous giver. Father God, bless them with all the promises that you have promised them for giving and being a cheerful giver. Open up the windows of heaven, pour out blessings they cannot contain. Rebuke the devourer at their doorstep. And Father God, most of all, peace that passes all understanding. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, awesome ushers. Awesome worship team. Good to have them all back, right? Look at that bow tie. At least it's not Botox, right? All right. These seven things, or the emperor's new clothes. Does anybody not know what the emperor's new clothes is? Don't be embarrassed. It's a non-literary culture. Nobody reads anything anymore. Huh? You know what it is? How many know what that is? The emperor's new clothes. Don't, don't be embarrassed. You can raise your hand. It's a fairy tale. <clears throat> On this lovely morning... Rainy morning. I'd like to continue our discussion from Second Peter about the seven pillars of faith. There are at least four categories of faith in the New Testament. There's the content of faith, which is the doctrines. And we decided that we want to have the same content of faith that the apostles had. What do you say? Amen. We're supposed to contend for the faith as delivered originally. We don't want to add to it. We're going to subtract. It doesn't need any chrome. doesn't need bells and whistles. Doesn't need liturgies, doesn't need sacraments, doesn't need officials, doesn't need anything but the Lord Jesus Christ. Saving faith, we looked at that, spiritual gift of faith, and the fruit of faith. Faith has fruit. What do you say? True. Faith cannot be separated from fruit. Faith cannot be separated from faithfulness. So Peter says this, <clears throat> there's these qualities, these qualities. If these qualities are yours, you know what if is? The biggest word in the Bible. Huh? What do you say? True. No bigger word. If these qualities are yours, and, and is also a huge word, and are increasing, does anyone know what increasing means? More, right? They keep you. What keeps you? These qualities keep you. Because they're spiritual qualities, they're evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. What do you say? They keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Three awesome titles for Jesus. Lord is the Old Testament name for God. Jesus means Savior. Christ means Messiah. Savior, Christ, and Lord. These qualities, what qualities? Anybody want to be ineffective? You want to go through life and be ineffective? Anybody want to go through life and be unfruitful? No. So there's all kinds of self-help groups out there. There's all kinds of things on the Internet which will tell you how to be a more productive life. The Bible has the way to live a productive life. Yeah. Unfruitful, what does it mean? It means without fruit. <laughs> fruit is grown. It's the result of work. You sow, you plant, you grow, you cultivate, you harvest. Fruit is associated with trees, it's crops, it's eating. It's, it's why you have a harvest festival. It's why you have, at the end of a season, big parties to celebrate your hard work. 
And because of the association of fruit with the idea of work and results, it's used in reference to human conduct. Right. So it's talking about our lives being fruitful lives. Glory. And Peter says this. Oh, un oh, unfruitful. Here we go. Pertains to not sowing. So if you're fruitful, what do you do? You've done the hard work that produces fruit. We've talked about this before. Proverbs 20, verse 4. If you don't plow, you don't harvest. Unfruitful means not sowing, not producing, no fruit, no harvest, no yielding. It means not yielding what it ought to yield. In other words, we all have our area of influence, our lives, and we ought to be yielding something fruitful for the kingdom of God, large or small. And we're not going to compare ourselves to those big industrial farmers with big tractors doing all kinds of stuff, right? You know, but we have our own garden and our own farm that we should be seeing some results in, some fruit in. So Peter says this. Let's see if I can get him to say it. What? He says, <laughs> make every effort to supplement your faith, right? Uh, 2 Peter 1.5. Make every effort to supplement your faith which means to make it your diligent a business to add to your faith seven things. He says there are seven things that will keep us from being unfruitful. Now, we know that the concept of fruit is a huge biblical uh, topic with full of amazing significance that should have practical implications for us. And, uh, you know, way back in the beginning in the garden, what did God do? God made a garden, took men, mankind, put them in this garden to do what? Work it. Okay? God loves garden. God loves flowers. Gardens are beautiful. The whole world's a big garden for God. Take care of it. What do you give? Give us dominion. We're supposed to be taking care of the planet, right? We're not supposed to be abusing it. not supposed to be wrecking it. Take care of it. And he says you're free to eat. Free means you're free. Right? As people say, you're not free. You say you're free. You can do whatever you want. He says you're free to eat of any one you want, but don't eat of that one, which means you can... Or you may not. <laughs> maybe you will. Maybe you won't. It's an if, right? It's a big if. But don't eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and, uh, good and evil. Now, it's a fruit tree, right? So a serpent comes to Eve. We know the whole story. And he, he says, you know, can't, can't we eat of any tree? Lord, put him in the garden. We can eat of a tree. Didn't God say you can eat from the tree? No, we can eat any tree we want. We can eat fruit from the trees. Well, didn't God say you must not eat from the tree that's in the middle? And you touch it? Or you die. And then she goes, no, it's good. It's a good tree. It looks good. It's going to make me smart. It's going to make me wise. So her husband's there. They ate it. So from the very beginning of the Bible to the very end of the Bible, fruit is a big and major biblical topic. So in the book of Revelation, first chapters of the Bible, last chapters of the Bible. John has a vision. There's water of life. Can you imagine? That is like Yosemite, right? Come on. Can you imagine how awesome this river is going to be? Show me the river of life, clear as crystal. Oh, man, give me a mask. I'm going down in that. <laughs> Flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Can you imagine if the Lamb and God are on equal terms? Yeah, we can. So on each side of this river is a tree, 12 crops of what? Fruit, fruit. yielding fruit. Every month. Wow, that's amazing. These must be some special trees. And leaves are for healing of the nations. So, the Bible, from beginning to end, fruit is predominantly displayed, uh, displayed cover to cover. It's an extremely important biblical concept. Even in the New Testament, we get there. John the Baptist comes preaching. The inauguration of the ministry of Jesus Christ. He's preaching repent. Repent means what? Turn around, change your mind, make a decision. Make a decision. Why would, he, why would he tell you to repent if you couldn't do it? Are you with me? Why would he tell you to use your mind, engage it with the will of God, and make a change in your life if you couldn't do it? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Maybe, maybe not. I'm free. I can eat of the tree. I don't have to eat of the tree. Right? Uh, this is the one spoken of the prophet. This is the one that's coming, John's saying. The prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare of Yahweh's coming. Make preparations. Make straight paths for him. We still need to do that, don't we? 
People are coming out from Jerusalem, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. These are the lawyers. These are the, the judicial branch. These are the leadership of religion. These are the people who should know better and should be teaching the right thing to the people. And he says, you're a brood of vipers. That's pretty harsh. I would never call somebody that until I ran to my lawyers. <laughs> so three years in legal troubles. I understand better now. I always thought that was metaphorical language, but I understand that it's literal. <laughs> Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? God's going to judge injustice. Are you with me? So we look at the world, you look at, look at the oppression, you look at the abuse, you look at the sickness, you look at the horror that's going on in this world. Don't worry. God will judge injustice. Who warns you to flee from the coming wrath? Who warns you to flee from what wrath? The wrath of God will be revealed against all injustice. Whew. These guys are the religious leaders. Right? They should know better. What does he say? What, what, what's the solution? Repent. <laughs> bear fruit. Produce fruit that shows or in keeping a comparable that can manifest your repentance. Repentance is shown to be true by fruitfulness. Don't just say things. We're in the lip service. A lot of lip service going on. What do you say? You ask somebody. Everybody's Christian. Really? And you do that? Uh, don't think you can just say, hey, we're elected. We're, we're elect. We're Abraham. What are these guys? We're, we're a part of the chosen family. Chosen doesn't mean you're automatically going to heaven. It means that you have an opportunity to serve God. I'm telling you, God, God can make stones raise up children for Abraham. Can you do that? Sure he can. Every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown in the fire. So is this serious business we're talking about? Yes. yes. Uh, fruit, carpos. Uh, unfruitful, acarpos. Well, they add, like atheists, you know what I'm saying? You add the negative to it. It means fruit, literally, figuratively. Of course, it's used both ways. That's comparable, it's suitable for the the reversal of your decision. Show that you're actively serving God, that you're fruitful in your uh, service to God. Now think how urgent this is. John the Baptist is out in the wilderness preaching this urgent message. Go, he's, and the people are coming out, and what's his message? Produce fruit, <laughs> right? Think about it. Produce fruit. Mm -hmm. Change your mind, change your heart, have a heart change. We don't care about the clothes that you wear. We don't care about your social position. We don't care what access you have, even to the temple. We don't care what you do in the temple. We don't care what goes on there. What we care about is what goes on in your heart. Every tree that doesn't bear good fruit. What's the key word here? Good. <laughs> good. He didn't say, as long as you're a tree, it's okay, and you got green leaves. No. It has to produce something. Remember that one fig tree that didn't produce anything? True faith will have true fruit. What do you think? Everybody knows what fruit trees do. They give fruit, right? You look at it, there's fruit. You go, oh, there's fruit on that tree. You can see it. You can pick it. You can eat it. Do good things with it. Avocados, you pull them down, turn them into guacamole, get some chips. It's awesome. What happens to the tree that's, that's been cut down? A tree that's get cut down is usually used for firewood. Make charcoal out of it, toothpaste, things like that. Facial charcoal. <clears throat> now, is he really talking about fruit and, and fruit trees, apples and oranges, things like that? What's he talking about? He's talking about people, what people do. He's talking about how people live their lives, whether it's a fruitful life or an unfruitful life. And like he says, he's talking to people, religious people, who are the most religious people, who are doing the most religious things in the world. God doesn't care about any of that. Does he care about any of that? No. He couldn't care about any of that. <laughs> what he cares about is a change of heart, a change of mind, and somebody who's actually producing good fruit, which is 
within our ability to do with the power of the Holy Spirit that we have. So Scripture tells us what the legitimate works are of God and other works of the Holy Spirit. So Peter gives us seven things. Seven things, Peter says, are going to keep you from falling, give you a good entryway into heaven. And it can't just be religious works. Are you with me? It can't be journeys. It can't be clothes. It can't be paraphernalia. What good is that? That's all external. What good is it? No value whatsoever. Not one value whatsoever. True repentance will yield true fruit. And we can say that lip service is not enough to save you from the fire. Just talk all you want. Right? Prayers, robes, religious practices, place of birth, holy journeys, social positions, never got anyone into heaven. We'll get you into heaven. A heart changed by the Holy Spirit that produces fruit. <sighs> fruit saves from fire. What did Jesus say? Watch out for false prophets. These are not, these are not people. He's not false prophets. He's not talking about Gentiles. Are you with me? He's talking about God's people who are not teaching you correctly. They're false prophets. But they're inwardly ferocious wolves. How do you recognize them? He says you recognize them by the fruit. <laughs> let's, let's see some fruit. <laughs> I mean, you go to the store, right? Does anybody ever go to the store and just pick up any apple and put it in your cart? No. What do you do? <laughs> you touch it. You must, then you ruin that one, so you get another one. <laughs> well, you know, when you go to get a cantaloupe, pop, pop, pop. You've got to pop it a little bit. You've got to press a little thing. You've know, you got you to mess with it, right? <laughs> You recognize good fruit. Every good tree bears good fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Bad tree cannot bear good. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in fire. Does that mean every? I think every means every. This is, this is, uh, this is terrible. Their fruit, by their fruit, you recognize them. Does, I mean, is that still true today? Yes. Yeah, it's still true today. They're still false prophets. There's, People preaching all kinds of baloney. People saying all kinds of stuff. They got no fruit. You look at their lives. You go, there's, there's, I, don't, I don't see in your life anything that indicates to me that you're actually doing anything that obeys Christ. Peter says this. If you possess these qualities. So ultimately... <clears throat> These guys are church people nowadays. They're, they're God's people, supposedly. They're going to have a rude awakening, aren't they? So where do you think false prophets are going to hang out? <laughs> Among you. They've come in to you in sheep's clothing. Oh, they all look good, right? Big bad wolf. Where, where, would you, where would you expect to find hypocrites except in the church? <laughs> right? Often you hear this all the time. I left the church because it's full of hypocrites. That, that could be true. But what you don't realize is that on judgment day, God's going to separate wheat from chaff. Do you think there's going to be one hypocrite in heaven? No. Heaven is not going to be full of hypocrites. You know where they go? Yeah, so if you don't want to be with hypocrites... For the rest of your life, and you despise them so much, you should find a good church, give your heart to Jesus, follow Christ, and make a difference in the world for the Lord Jesus. Or, I'm going to party with all my friends in hell. They ain't no party in hell, believe me. It's not a party. You're going to find yourself in eternity with those fruitless hypocrites that you despise so much. They can't fool God, right? They might fool us, they won't fool God. Right. All right. Whew. Now, are you ready? Yeah. Get it right. Let's imagine for a moment, if you can only imagine, you're at the end of your life. Bob's feeling that right now. He, he's, he's there. <laughs> Bob's going to live a long life. Nikki, 105, right? 105. Okay, you're at the end of your life, and you've, let's say that you've led an honorable Christian life, 
and you're going to encapsulate the essence of following Christ, and you're going to impart your most important advice for posterity. What advice would you give on your deathbed to your family, to your friends, to Christians in general, as the most essential and foremost goal of the Christian life? What would you tell them? What advice does Peter give? What would Peter do? Peter says this in 2 Peter 1.8. Now we know that Peter's lived a long life. He's looking down the tunnel. The light's getting bigger. Uh, we'll look at that in just a moment. But he says, if you, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they'll keep you from being ineffective and productive. So he says, 2 Peter 1.10, make every effort. Make every effort. Which means what? At least some. All right? There should be at least a minimum of effort. Right? Anybody done anything competitive sports? Okay, you have coaches that force you to do more than you want or like so that you can be your best. So I'm trying to help us see that it takes a little, a little bit of effort in order to confirm your calling and election. Now, if you do these things, what things? What, wait, what things? You will never stumble. I like that. Yes. Who wants to stumble all day? Who wants to keep running into the wall? Who wants to keep hurting themselves all the time? You know what I'm saying? You climb the ladder, you get in the roof, you jump off. You know what? Take the ladder down. Crawl down. Don't hurt yourself all the time. We make the same mistakes over and over again. We don't learn. We hurt ourselves. We stumble. We fall. If you do these things, you will never stumble. He says, you'll receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Enter in, my good and faithful servant. That's what we're living for, to hear those words. He's going to tell us the keys, the qualities, the things necessary to hear those words. Amen. He says, I'm always going to remind you of these things. Amen. It's right for me to refresh your memory as what? As long as I live. You know, they're going, oh, we've heard that before. <laughs> right? Yep. Peter, oh, Peter's doing that again. He's got one string on his guitar. I'll sleep through this one. I, and then look what he says, 2 Peter 1.15. I will make every effort. I'm going to work hard to make sure that after I'm gone, you'll always be able to remember these things. 2 Peter 3.14. Dear friends, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, at peace with him. Be on your guard that you're not carried away by the error of lawlessness. Fall and fall from your secure position. Perhaps you could fall from your secure position. Grow. What's the solution? Be on your guard. Grow. Grow in grace. Grow in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What are the things that are so important to Peter to make every effort to remember, refresh, increase, guard, and grow? Okay? Peter, there he is. His beard's nicely trimmed. He's got a little papyrus in his hand. He's got the sign. <laughs> Summa Theologica. So we know a lot about Peter, an early disciple of Christ, for three years of his earthly ministry, and then for an additional 37 years or so after the resurrection. So who's Peter? He's a premier apostle. He's an eyewitness of all things, the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. He's baptized in the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Peter went on a number of missionary journeys uh, recorded in Scripture. We know that he had a big ministry in Palestine and Judea. And uh, we know that he traveled, he must have traveled up through uh, what is called Asia here, through this area, because his first epistle was written to this particular area. So we're going to assume safely that he had some ministry there. We know from history that he made to Corinth, and uh, he's crucified upside down in Rome, 
around AD 67. So he spent uh, some years in Antioch, Syria, which is up in this area, which was one of the major centers of Christianity. And there's much more ministry of Peter than what we find in Scripture. Okay, he's a busy guy. We can, we can understand that. That's pretty easy. Much more than we find in the New Testament. And historical records show that he has, outside the Scripture, there's travels that he made, and we can't even know them all. But what we know is, <clears throat> if we put the crucifixion of Christ around AD 30 or so, Cornelius event, Acts 10, 80, 40, 1 Peter written around 64, 2 Peter around 67. Now, it's consensus that somewhere around there, around 67 or so, Peter is crucified after nine months in the Mamertine prison in Rome. So, this is about, what, 37 years. Can anybody do the math for me? Yep. I ran out of fingers. And then if he's got three years of walking with Jesus, he's got about 40 years now by the time he writes this second epistle. And what does his faith include? His faith includes the miraculous, doesn't it? Yeah. Raising the dead, casting out of demons, laying hands on the sick, spiritual gifts, visions, dreams, signs and wonders, extensive cross-cultural missionary activity. He defended the faith fearlessly in a couple of church councils and all over the world. He suffered for his faith patiently, ultimately died. So at this time in his career, he's got 40 years of diligent service to Jesus Christ. And he's looking at the end of his life because he says, The Lord Jesus has shown me that I don't have much time left. And I want to do something important so that you will always remember these seven qualities. So we know that Peter was an anointed man of God. And the word that Peter would share from his personal treasure chest would be inspired by God and take the form of revelation and prophecy. It's his magnum opus, his great work. Okay? He's at the end of his life. He knows his time is short. He says, I want to leave something behind that you're going to remember. And I want to encourage you because I'm going to make every effort. My life goal now. My emphasis in life now is to instruct you in these things that will keep you from falling, allow you to enter the kingdom of God cheerfully, and keep you from stumbling, and make your life fruitful and effective. So what is this emphasis? What's this focus? What's his final advice going to take? What, what is Peter going to choose to accentuate at this particular time in his life from his vast reservoir of experience? What's going to be this crown jewel that Peter would bequeath to the next generation? <sighs> Prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, Peter tells us. This word from Peter has the authority of the Holy Spirit. What do you say? So Peter has the highest spiritual credentials. And Peter said, I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to get you to appreciate, remember, refresh, increase, guard, and grow in these seven things. This is my final mission in life. <clears throat> and as I think about my whole life, and I think about what's most important in understanding the workings of the kingdom of God, I'm going to give you these seven things to appreciate, to remember, to refresh, increase guard and to grow he says here it is here they are who would imagine that these were the things of all the things that peter could think of as an entire life all the th places he's been and all the things that he's seen and done all, all the supernatural activity that he's participated in he goes look at faith manifests itself in fruit there's faith shows itself in seven ways. More than this, but at least these seven. We know that. Goodness, knowledge, endurance, 
godliness, brotherly affection, and love. Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, and love. Whew. Can you imagine? <laughs> the guy, what would they call it? Ex-cathedra? Okay. From the throne of Peter? Here you go. Do these things. Let me remind you. Let me refresh you. Let me help you. The person who lacks these things is blind, short-sighted, and has forgotten that you're cleansed from your sins. It's a lacquer slacker. <laughs> Faith and faithfulness cannot be separated. There's no such thing as fruitless faith. That's like the emperor's new clothes. You know the story. The Emperor's New Clothes, Hans Christian Andersen, published April 7th, 1837. So there's this emperor who only cares about the latest styles and wearing the best clothes and displaying those clothes. So he hires these two weavers who promise that they're going to make him the best suit of clothes ever. And they say that this cloth is so special, it's what? Invisible. And can only be seen by those who are of high position intellectually. He says, those who are of low position, stupid or incompetent, cannot see this cloth. Can't see it. So they go about working, working, you know, making this invisible suit of clothes for the emperor. They finally finish. They tell everybody, this gets all over the kingdom, right, that they're making this special clothes that can only be seen if you're smart man of position or some kind of, of uh, not hopelessly stupid, okay? For the hopelessly stupid, unfit for position, they can't see it. So they, of course, they pretend to manufacture the clothes and everyone has to pretend like they see the clothes. Amen. They don't want to be the person that goes, what, I don't see anything. You're stupid, right? So if they finally... Finish, they dress him, he marches in procession out in front of his people. I, I got these from a couple different places. These are some of the nicer ones. All right. Let me see, I got any more? These are some of the some of the better ones. I didn't realize how many pictures there were of this on the internet. So he's in this uh, procession, and, and nobody in the town wants to say he doesn't have any clothes on, right? So some little kid goes, hey, the king has no clothes. And everybody goes, yeah, you're right. <sighs> but the story is much older than 1837. In fact, there's a count in the book of Revelation about this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Right? About the uh, spiritual nudist? To the angel of the church in Laodicea, he says, look it, Revelation 3.17. It's to the church. It's to the church. Forget where it is. Why, why no, wouldn't it apply to us today? You say, I'm rich. God wants me rich. I'm wealthy. Is there anything wrong with wealth? No, not necessarily. I need nothing. I'm rich. I'm wealthy. I need nothing. He says, but you don't know that you are wretched Pitiful, poor, blind, and what? Naked. You're running around out in public. You got your parade and your procession, and you are a streaker, <laughs> completely naked. It's an old story. Jesus says, I know your works. They're neither cold nor hot. On a hot day, you want something cold, and a cold day, you want something hot, right? So he says, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in fire so that you may, be, so that you may really be rich, and white clothes that you may be dressed, 
and your shameful nakedness not exposed. You got no clothes. <sighs> Colossians. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself. Here's the seven for Paul. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, and over all these virtues put on love. These are clothes, right? These are the clothes. Yeah, we want the armor of God, right? So I thought today as I was putting clothes on, I go, I get up ready and put clothes on, right? You, you get ready. A lot of my clothes are in boxes and stuff like that, so I have my one shirt that I could find in the closet. I'm still trying to move. And I thought, you know, what if when we put our clothes on in the morning, we actually said, Lord, clothe me in humility. Lord, clothe me in goodness. Lord, clothe me in gentleness and patience. Let me be clothed. So I'm not spiritually naked. So I'm not running around without any clothes on. He says, put all of these on over these virtues. Put on love. How important is number six? Forgiveness. It's big. We, pretty, we sing a song, they lay it all down, lay it all down. It's true, man. You just got to just keep laying it down, laying it down, laying it down. Because it comes up, and you go, no, I'm going to do it again. <gasps> no, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to forgive again. How many, how many did Jesus say? 490 times, right? <laughs> 70 times 7. That's a long time. That's many, many times. So don't be wretched. Don't be pitiful. Don't be poor, blind, short-sighted, or naked. Now, what do you do when your clothes get dirty? You just you wash them, right? What do you, you, you wash them. Blessed are those who have washed their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and go through the gates into the city. What do you say? Let's pray. Father, I just pray that the things that are most important to you would also be most important to us. We all want to know when you're coming back, the second coming. Lord, we all want to know. So we want to be on the cutting edge of prophetic movement and all those things, Lord. But I just pray that we would understand this jewel, this treasure chest of the things that are most important to you. And I pray, Father, that they'd be most important to us. Lord, that we would not slack, that we would not become blind, that we would not run around naked. I pray, Father, for us as this year, and as we look at these pillars, this fruit, that we would take it to heart and that we would come to you, Lord, when we need a cleansing and you wash our clothes so that we can walk before you in righteousness, clothed in the mighty righteousness of Christ. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stand if you can. Let's worship the Lord together. And if you need some laundry washed, it's the laundromat right here, right? The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, what? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's not opposed to cleansing sin. And God's not opposed to us being reminded as Peter said, I'm going to spend the rest of my life reminding you this. Seven important things. Father, we thank you for the fruit of faith. Help us to be faithful servants. Help us this year to grow and increase in the things that are so important to you. Help us, Lord, that when we get there on that day, we'll hear those words that are so special as we rise up, Lord, every day. Help us to live, to hear those words. Enter in good and faithful, faithful servant. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Through the eyes of man seems there's so much we have lost. So we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked. And one by one the enemy has whispered lies and let them off the slave.
come alive. Just put a hand on someone next to you and just pray a blessing on them. Lord, we come before you right now, Lord. We want to be alive in you. We want to be clothed in you, Lord. We want to be streakers, Lord, and slackers, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that we would make effort. We would make more effort, Lord, every effort to grow closer to you, to grow the fruit that you so desire, Lord. Like when you came to the vineyard, you said you want fruit, and they say we're not giving you any. Father, we would have fruit to present to you. I pronounce a blessing on this congregation. I pronounce uh, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit here to be present among us. And Lord, we pray that our hands would be on the plow, that we'd sow seed, good seed and good soil, and that we would enjoy harvest, Lord. We pray for this new year, this new season, this new harvest time, Lord. Sing a little bit more of that again. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's come alive here. Let's come alive. You ready? I think we need some like flags or something. We got a lot of sound out of this little room. Breathe the breath of God. Now breathe the breath of God. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. Breathe the breath of God. Breathe the breath of God. Thank you so much that we're alive in you and that you're alive and well. Thank you that you've called us, Lord, to be your ambassadors in our generation. Help us, Lord, to shed the old and to put on the new. Help us to be clothed, Lord, clothed in righteousness. Help us to put on our clothes every day, Lord Jesus, before you. And Lord, we just uh, thank you for this, this word, this treasure from Peter's reservoir, Lord, from his treasure chest. And we just give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to hang out here. We're going to worship a little bit. I'm sure there's food and all kinds of fun stuff in the back. If you want someone to pray with you, we'd love to pray with you. If you have some ashes you'd like to leave here, we'd love to do that. Bring your word, grief and pain. Every cause you have a shame. Oh, down when your 
cares have buried you and there's nothing left to do lay it all down